Hello everyone, this is Jen Berryhill coming to you on Moons of Ascension. I wanted to come on and share a little bit about the moon cycle that we're in right now. We entered into the first dimension of the Tree of Life Earth Star calendar, which is the Buffalo Moon. And we came out of what we would call the heart moon, which was the 13th moon of the 2022 yearly lunar cycle. And during that heart moon, I was recognizing um, how powerful the teachings are when you're working with the Earth Star calendar and the symbols that come through um, that Chief Golden Light Eagle has been teaching for over the last 25 years. So if you're working with that information that's in the symbols books, um, you'll kind of have a sense of what I'm talking about. But even if you're new to this channel or new to me um, and what I share, it will probably still resonate because you are here and listening to this message. So during that December heart moon, we were in the energy of non-attachment and non-judgment. And so a lot of us might have been facing situations where we were having to be in a place of deep surrender. And things that we thought were going to go a certain way probably didn't. And it created this test of, okay, what am I going to hold on to with this? What do I need to let go? How do I surrender? And what will unfold when I do? And so it's all about the heart. So this is a way for the heart to open. So when we can surrender and allow spirit to really move us and guide us, we'll really see what's really true and what we really have that is ours to claim. And so a lot of what we hold on to you know, is like it's owning us versus we own that. And so, I don't know, it just paints a whole new picture of how we can move in our life and what we can create. And this is important because the heart is what we want to be creating with and what we want to manifest through. So moving into the Buffalo Moon, um, this is the, starting the new Earth Star calendar, and it's the first dimension, which opens in the Stargate of Purity. This is the time, this month is the time where we're clearing out old negative energies. And when I say negative, I'm referring to things that are in us. Um, that we may not be seeing right now, but they're they're in our cells. Um, and this is coming from times when we experienced anger or resentment, you know, grudges, kind of having that separating mentality so it can come through as racism, discrimination. Um, so basically, this is purifying out judgment. And this is really important because we know that we're powerful creator beings and we work with the law of attraction. So everything in our external world is there because of the vibration that we hold. And our, our vibration really has more to do with how we feel than how we think. But our thoughts are creating chemical reactions with our body that is creating a vibration. So if we're having thoughts that are angry or jealous or judgmental in a negative way, or you know we're, we're not happy with what we're seeing within somebody else, doing the work and seeing you know everything's just a mirror. Everybody in our life is just a mirror, but we've drawn them in for a reason. So we're experiencing something so that we are um, able to pay attention to it so that we can bring a deeper level of clearing and healing within ourselves. And so speaking of law of attraction, this has also to do with, you know, as above, so below. So below, meaning this is like our 3D reality, the people, the experiences that we're creating 
within our externalized viewpoint, there's also the aspect of as above. So this, when we're saying as above, you know, spirit comes to us when we are pure of heart and in our sincerity. And so, you know, if you're wanting to have a deeper connection spiritually, purity is necessary. You know, we, we need to be in a high frequency. The highest frequency is love. And so love is how spirit, spirit comes to us and communicates with us. And how we communicate our desires to create the things that we would like to see within our life. So I'll talk about that in just a second. But I want to touch on why this moon is the buffalo moon. And, you know, these earth guardians that come through in these teachings they all hold a valuable key. And when we look at the Buffalo Nation, these animals have an incredible connection to Mother Earth. And in the first dimension, this is the realm of the Earth. So we rise through these planetary bodies throughout the 13 moon cycles. And we start with the first dimension with the buffalo and our connection to Mother Earth. And at one point in time, there were millions and millions of these amazing animals, these buffalo, roaming the Earth. And they sustained humanity. They sustained the indigenous peoples for a very, very long time. And they are a giveaway nation. They give of themselves for the human, just like all the other earth guardians that come to us in these teachings. And so when they were haunted, every aspect, every part, every bit of the animal was utilized. I don't want to say used, but implemented into a way of life of survival. They, provi they provided the aspect of survival. And so at the very deepest level, we're in survival. And they're such beautiful teachers because they've given themselves a way for us to survive. Providing food, providing shelter, providing clothing, providing their bones for weapons. Their stomachs were used for um, water containers. And when we sun dance, it's... The buffalo is a huge piece of our ceremony because the heart of the buffalo is what goes into the ground underneath the tree that gives us that connection to the tree, reminding us our heart is in the earth and our connection starts with the tree. We are trees. We are walking trees. We have that connection from the earth to creation, into the heart of creation. And so, <clears throat> It's a reminder for us to also recognize our need for giveaway. Giveaway is very important to all of life. You know, this is really laying down all thoughts of self and selfishness, selfishness and giving back in equal measure for the gifts of food and breath and life. And so the buffalo says to you know, come to know the thoughts and feelings of the sacred relations that are here, here on earth. Every star in the cosmos and every intelligence in the universe has its representative here on Mother Earth. Learn the relations that surround you here. And also recognize Collectively, personally, we as human beings rarely accept another being fully. And we need to accept that pain is simply surrender and giveaway and unfoldment. And so this all ties into the message of the buffalo, which is that of spiritual discernment. Because until 
love is the dominating energy and frequency in the heart of the human on Mother Earth, we have to have spiritual discernment. And this also ties directly in with the law of attraction. One of the ways to have spiritual discernment, to be able to recognize, you know, what's healthy for me, what's a healthy frequency for me to be around and create more life with, um, the key of that is through prayer, because prayer is the key to clear sight. Prayer is bringing forth your inner wishes of the sacred heart and putting them forth to the universe with the energy of the mind, body, and spirit. Spiritual discernment is prayer unfolding what is most important. And so, you know, when we pray and we give all of ourselves into that prayer, that's what we call sincerity because we can feel the prayer. We can feel it in our heart. Sometimes tears will come to our eyes as we're asking for the help that we need or for the help that we need for somebody that we love that's going through a really difficult time. And we have to remember our giveaway with that prayer, you know, giving back in equal measure. So if, if we're recognizing that, oh my gosh, spirit really is hearing me and is helping and I'm seeing a change in my physical world, you know, give thanks, do the wopila. The wopila is so important because it nourishes the energy and it nourishes the spirits that are coming to help. And it also allows them to be set free when things are complete and then spirit can move on and help the next and the next and the next until we're calling them back in again and asking if something else has come up for help. So another important piece to recognize is the test that comes in during this moon cycle. We're in the test of that sincerity and the devotion to spiritual path. And so even just applying sacredness into everything that we're doing, whether it's at work or within our families or, you know, even going to the gym or shopping for groceries, you know, we might find ourselves a little bit stressed out, but if we make it sacred and have gratitude, I mean, that's such a simple way to have that sincerity is through gratitude. But when tests come, you know, this is the time to really see how you're responding. And are you coming from a place of trust in the universe? Or is there something that's pulling you back through fear and a need to control? So control is the opposite of surrender. Control is the mind and the ego trying to protect itself where you know surrendering to spirit allows the energy to move with the flow of life not against it so we're in the time of spiritual protection of family and this law through spiritual discernment and we're in a time of new beginnings we may be needing to recognize that, you know, having some boundaries and rules in place frees us up to enjoy ourselves as we meet our responsibilities. It's a time to set practical and attainable goals, work on developing maturity and self-discipline and common sense. We're prompted to consider and prepare for the future. So this full moon is really bringing up a desire maybe to connect with our families or our own hearts. Something is exposed or illuminated, prompting us to get in touch with those things in our personal lives that we have been neglecting or putting off. So slowly but surely, confidence in our ability to assert ourselves and to affect change will increase. And we'll begin to rebuild our enthusiasm and projects that have been stalled will start to move forward and we will feel that confidence and the assertiveness that we need so it's a really powerful time of creation and creation is so much tied into the earthly energies because creation is manifestation 
And the very beginning of creation is started with love. And so that is the biggest test. What's going to keep us in the energy of love? Spirit wants also to bring in the goddess. And in these 13 moon stargates, there are 13 grandmother goddesses that come to support us each lunar cycle. And this month in the stargate of purity, we have grandmother Pana, the goddess of germination. And she is the mother. She is the essence of life giving energy that births into form. It's like she is a midwife of potentialities that come into materialization. And I found some information about the Inuit culture and their beliefs about Pana. And they say that she's the custodian of souls. Pana is also known as the woman up there and is often seen as a deity who resides within the starry skies. And her task is to watch over the souls who are transported from the middle world, Earth, and sent to the upper realms, the sky. And there she takes care of the souls until they're ready to be reincarnated, reincarnated and once more sent back to earth to be born again as a baby. The Inuit people believe in a three-layer world. The underworld is where the evil spirits reside. Earth is where the mortal souls face the harsh elements and the upper world is where the soul goes to reside until reincarnation. When a soul is ready to be reincarnated, Pana is assisted by the god of the moon who cannot shine during this time. This is why the moon falls into a dark stage. The other physical effect that Pana is associated with for the Inuit people is the northern lights. And it is believed that there are holes in the part of the upper world where Pana resides. And because of these holes, the light of God slips through and creates a bright hue of light that dances across the sky. And I love this because I um, have been sitting with my new Aurora Borealis light for this past couple weeks and... Um, just dreaming into that light, the way that it moves and dances and changes colors and hues and, you know, such a reflection of the rainbow light that we are within ourselves. So we have a lot of support when we know who to call upon. And this is the time to call upon the Buffalo Nation for one, because they teach through the law of spiritual discernment and they help us to know who family really are. And the heart knows who family is. The head has absolutely no idea. So feel your relations. Feel your relations here on Mother Earth. These Earth Guardians. All these different civilizations. They're an aspect of who we are on the inside. And they help us with our spiritual discernment by helping us build our intuition. And showing us how they survive. We also have Lady Venus to call upon who brings brings us into right relationship with our solar family. And, you know, this is also an important teaching about how the stone nation, this earth body, holds the energy of love. You know, our root chakra, our materialistic chakra, or the, the densest chakra within our body, the red root, is the essence of love. And so we can work with the stones and the crystals to develop more deeply love within ourselves, the remembrance, the memories, this, the crystals and the stones hold memories. And that's what we're doing. We're ascending. We're in an ascension process to remember who we are, to activate those memories within our bodies, because our bodies also hold crystals and they're programmable. And if they're programmable, we can reprogram ourselves from a new place with new perspectives, the transformation, transmutation of new perceptions. 
seeing things differently, seeing things with new eyes, seeing things with love, seeing the acceptance, giving ourselves permission to accept from a place of unconditional love, not from separation, not from anger, not from old grudges, from love. And there's an amazing teaching that comes through with El Moria with the shield of the father's heart. And I would encourage every man who has the book, the Makawachachpewichocha, the symbols book, to read the message of El Morea. There's some really important information that we need you men to be doing. And it has to do with the root chakra, the sacral chakra and the solar chakra. But you hold the power to make such powerful change in our world. And I'll just say this much, it has to do with these systems in place, these systems of government, education, medicine, these institutions, they were created by men. And so you know how to make the change because you created it. And we can bring in the love of the, the woman and the goddess to support the man and channeling the energy to make the changes that we all want to see as we're shifting into the Aquarian age. So please do yourself a favor. If you have the book, read the message of El Maria and the shield of the father's heart. And just to crescendo everything else that's going on during this moon cycle, on these quarter moons, these half moons or whatever you want to call them, um, these midpoints between the new moon and the full moon, and then the midpoint between the full moon and the next new moon, these are the 1313 energies. These are the masculine and feminine aspects that really come through strongly at those points in time. And so the yin, the first quarter, works with the quantum fields of the subatomics and the universal law of inner light. And in there, the teachers are the hummingbird, Athena, and the titan of memory. And then we're moving out of this full moon into the waxing fourth quarter, this half moon, um, which is Ra, R-A, Ra, the oneness of all light and the spiritual power of the sun. So connect with the sun and activate what you need within your DNA as your memories that you would like to have supporting you. Those memories that went silent, those memories that went dormant. You know, we want to activate the DNA to, to bring those memories back to life. Sometimes it can be challenging because we'll have memories that aren't fun or um, aren't uh, fun to experience. <laughs> We might have past life memories that um, are terrifying, that we don't want to relive. But this is our time to, like I said, do that work and transform it and just gain the wisdom, get the gift out of that experience, because that gift is, is what you can bring through now as power, as peace in the sun are all of our ancestors, our who all the versions of who we are ready to be birthed are in the sun. And the sun is very active right now. We just experienced an X class, I heard. And so, um, you know, the energy coming from the sun holds the codes. The codes to help you remember your mission, the codes to help you have strength and confidence and good health. The sun activates the hypothalamus gland which is our master gland of our immune system. The sun works with that trinity, the hypothalamus, the pineal, and the pituitary gland. All of these glands are, they house our gifts. They house our gifts of clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, psychic abilities, so many, so many gifts. And the sun helps to um, clear out some of the distortions and the calcification 
that allow um allow a deeper healing for those gifts to fully come online once again so even if it's just spending a few minutes in the morning greeting the sun and your ancestors that reside there is a powerful way to create a sacred day for yourself to create a space for love to operate within your system for your entire day I like to call in my ancestors during that time to guide me and support me and protect me throughout my day. And I place a lot of gratitude into the sun from my heart to as that giveaway, as that prayer unfolding. So this next clip, you could say, um, I'm going to share with you Chief Golden Light Eagle sharing the teachings of these three guardians, the Buffalo Nation, Lady Venus, and El Moria. So if you don't have the book, um, that's okay. You don't need it. Um, all the teachings are available. And um, if you resonate with it, you can see how this can plug into your life um, and how they can support you in um, giving you tools to navigate this ascension process. We have a lot of big energy coming in through 2023. The eclipse season is going to be super potent and we're going to be leveling up big time this year. And it may be a little bit spicy and uncomfortable and hot, but I just see so much beauty for all of us, for the family to be a strong unit once again, for the divine mother to shine within all of us. So thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to drop a comment or share and like if you liked this video. I'm just, um, I'm doing this from my heart. I don't ask for anything. This is me and my mission. 